Most professionals realize that virtually no organization uses every single last best practice when it comes to any accounting or finance function, but especially when it comes to the accounts payable process. That being said, there are certain basic best practices you absolutely cannot afford not to use. We're going to identify 10 of them and explain what can go wrong if you choose to ignore them and not incorporate them into your basic processes. Make sure you stick around until the end when we talk about the one practice that many don't realize can be a real game changer and not in a good way if you're not using it. As some watching this might be aware, I'm the author of over 20 business books, most of them focusing on the accounts payable function, including 127 best practices for accounts payable. While I'd love it if every company would use all the best practices I talk about, I realize that in the real world, the one we all live in, that is not likely for a variety of reasons. But the 10 we are about to discuss are vital. For without them, the bottom line, i.e. your profitability, will suffer. And in a few extreme cases, the losses will be so severe the company will not be able to continue. Don't let that happen at your company. Make sure at a minimum the following are used. Must use accounts payable best practice number one. Set up one central email address for the receipt of invoices and invoices only. If you allow invoices to be sent wherever the supplier chooses or guesses to send them, they will A, send multiple copies to different people or B, email and snail mail the, the invoice or C, email them to an individual who may or may not get around to forwarding that email to the accounts payable team for processing. What's more, individuals take holiday, get sick, and sometimes just forget. They also leave the company. Of course, while the supplier may not have sent the invoice to accounts payable, they certainly know enough to call accounts payable when it's not been paid within the time frame that they deem is a re reasonable. The end result is a process is that process works more smoothly for everyone involved if they just send the invoices to accounts payable and send only one copy of that email directly to the centralized email address. Must use accounts payable best practice number two. Get a W-9 from every new vendor. Now, sometimes the supplier will assure you that they don't need to provide you the W-9 because they're not reportable. They may be right, they may be wrong, but it is your company that's going to get hit with a B notice if they are wrong. And it is your company that's going to have to pay the associated fine. And it is your company that will now have raised its profile with the IRS as one that's not compliant with IRS guidelines. So get the W-9 from every single vendor and do the verification yourself. They could be right, they, they could be wrong, or they could just be trying to pull a fast one so you don't report their income and they don't have to pay income tax on it. There is one last reason to get that W-9. Some of you may remember, even if you're trying hard to forget it, that at one point over 10 years ago, there was talk of having to report all income to the IRS on 1099. That was repealed, but most tax professionals believe it will someday come back and you want to be ready by having collected all your W-9. Collecting the W-9s is just the first step. There's more. Must use accounts payable best practice number three. Run every W-9 information, the information on the W-9 through IRS TIN matching to ensure that the information provided by the supplier is accurate, i.e. The name on the W-9 matches the name the IRS has on its records associated with that particular TIN. The TIN, in all likelihood, will be an EIN for an entity or a Social Security number for an individual. Don't wait until year-end to run this information through IRS TIN matching, which is the free service from the IRS. Do it as soon as you receive the information and before you make the first payment. That way, you are in the driver's seat and get the, can get the supplier to correct the information if it is not correct because they want to get paid. Must use accounts payable practice number four. Set up and insist everyone on your staff use the strict coding standard for entering both invoice data and setting up vendors in the master vendor file and making changes to the vendor file. You need this even if you're using an automation solution for invoice or accounts payable processing. Why you ask? Because even with an automation solution, your folks will still have to do some data entry. They will have to put through corrections, and as many have discovered the hard way, utilization of automation solutions is not 100% right off the bat. So don't let your folks introduce errors because they aren't using your standardized data entry protocols. Must use accounts payable best practice number five, 
use the three-way match when processing invoices to ensure that invoices aren't paid twice, the correct amount is paid, and the correct price is charged, and no extra fees are tacked on that have been negotiated to be paid by the seller. Also, this is one of the best ways to catch phony invoices or fraudulent invoices, for there'll be no purchase order or receiving document to match again. Must use accounts payable best practice number six. Use positive pay to protect against check fraud, since in all likelihood, if you're watching this and you're a U.S. company, you are still issuing paper check. If your bank offers it, take advantage of payee name positive pay as it adds that extra level of protection against someone stealing one of your checks and altering the payee name. Even though there is a huge push towards electronic payment, there are many new types of electronic payment fraud. Check fraud still remains the most commonly attempted type of payment fraud. Thanks to positive pay, not many of those attempted frauds make it through. So, protect yourself fully by purchasing positive, a positive pay product from your bank. Must use accounts payable best practice number seven. Verify anything out of the ordinary before executing the change. The most vicious of these frauds in recent years is the plethora of phony change of bank account email requests that have been inundating accounts payable departments everywhere. But this is not the only type of fraud to be on the alert for. Anytime there is anything that is outside the normal way you operate, verify it before executing. Don't think that you're too small, that it wouldn't be worth anyone's bother to try and defraud your organization, or too big and crooks wouldn't dare try. Neither is true, as both big and small companies alike have learned, unfortunately, the hard way. Absolutely everyone is a target. Before we get to the last few best practices, including one that sadly is frequently ignored, if you find this information useful, it would be helpful to me if you would hit the like or the thumbs up button. It sends a message to both this network and me that this content should be shared and more like it created. A big thank you from me to you if you're one of those individuals who hit the like button. Must use best practice, accounts payable best practice number eight. Aggressively move away from paper checks. They are expensive, require lots of manual effort, and are generally an inefficient way to operate a payment function. Those efforts could be used on more value-add tasks, like verifying those change of bank account requests are valid, doing the increasing amount of regulatory reporting now required, or perhaps even some of the analytical work that can help you run a more efficient and effective department. You may just be surprised to find out how many of your suppliers are receptive to receiving an ACH payment instead of a paper check. I'm pleasantly surprised, I might add. Must use accounts payable best practice number nine. Daily bank recs are a must if you wish to recover any funds associated with an unauthorized ACH transaction that was executed against your bank account. While individuals have a longer period of time to refute such unauthorized charges, entities, which is anyone who's not an individual, have only 48 hours from the time the transaction hits the bank account. The fact that you didn't check your account in that time period is unfortunately irrelevant to this consideration. Since many only check their accounts once a day, assume the worst case scenario that the transaction hit right after you checked your balances and conduct daily bank records. Some best practice organizations will actually check several times a day to ensure that no unauthorized transactions slip through. Must use must use accounts payable best practice number 10. Appropriate separation of duties across the entire procured a pay chain is an absolute must. For without this separation, the necessary checks and balances are simply not in place. With technology making serious inroads into the accounts payable department everywhere, accounts payable departments are getting smaller and smaller. Why is this such a big deal? Because if one person has access to more than one leg of the procure to pay process, it becomes much easier for that person to defraud the organization. Will most do this? Absolutely not. But the problem is you don't know which employee is the one that has that dishonest streak. Time and time again, when there is an internal or occupational fraud, the perpetrator ends up being a long-term trusted employee, the exact type of employee that, get, that sometimes gets access 
no employee should have. These smaller departments means having enough staff to be able to affect this separation is becoming an issue for a number of mid-size and larger companies. We recently did a video spelling out in detail how the separation of duties across the accounts payable function should work. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description.